So we're back on the Fury again, and if you guys missed the last video, you missed that happening. So if you missed that, you should definitely go back and check it out. Uh, for now, we're gonna get back on the seats. When I left you guys last on the front seats, we had wrapped up the uh, one of the buckets. We got a split bench, and uh, it's got the buckets here, you can see. and. It, Look at there, we did the other side. We've got both sides done now. Now we're working on the bench part of the seat. That's this guy over here, terrible shape. We gotta do something with it as well. Uh, for now, I'm gonna tear off all of this old nasty foam. You can see uh, we definitely got our money's worth out of it. So let's get all of that off of there first. Gotta figure out something with the, uh, the, the armrest here because I'm not even sure just yet. Let's focus on that later and deal with this for now. I'm gonna get all this crap off of here and I've got some brand new foam gonna go in. I think we should start right there. In fact, go ahead and get the armrest off. This comes off really easy. Just got a uh, Allen wrench screw on each side, it looks like. That's gonna hold that on there. So we'll get that off. And then uh, I think we'll move on to trying to get these seat belts out of here. Those have gotta definitely get out of our way before we can move on I'm glad this armrest comes off pretty easy There's nothing to that yeah, it's got these little Allen wrench it's got a little sleeve on it there so you don't want to lose those I'll go ahead and put them back in just like we always do these seat belt bolts are kind of special too kind of a fine threaded Fine threaded with a uh, shoulder on them, so we definitely don't want to lose those. But they've got to come off so I can slip the cover off, and then this can come out of here now. And again, I'm just going to put everything the way it goes until I'm ready to put it back on or clean it or whatever, because I don't want to lose these. I noticed that if you kind of just push this down in here, put the bolt back through the hole, this little flap there kind of holds it in place, that way we won't lose it. I'm also gonna mark these two. This is the passenger side, so we'll stick a P on it, set it over there, do the same thing on this one, same exact process all over again. Do the same thing over on the driver's side, and we'll mark it as well. Go D for driver's side. So I'm gonna try to get this out. This is the little thing that the seatbelt slides down into, and I guess it just kind of there we go, it just clips off of that, and this will poke right up through the hole. There it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and slip this back on so we don't lose it. Yeah, like that. And that takes care of the driver's side. Man, after all that washing we did, this is still all sticky right here. It even left a mark on me. That is so gross. Let's flip this over for now. Get the rest of this nasty wore out material off of this thing. Got a bunch of loose wires in here. I guess I'm gonna have to get rid of those because they're just kind of all over the place. You see what I'm talking about? Look, that's just a loose wire just floating around in there. Got another one off over here. I don't know. Some of that may need to go back in there. I don't really know. So anyway, if it's loose and broken, I mean, look at all the wires I just pulled out of this. They're not even attached to anything. I guess they're just broken. Uh, I was being told that this is for the seat belt. Tells you when you're not got your seat belt on. And look, there's another piece of wire. Uh, this one's still attached. This one seems to be attached, and so does this one. Okay, well, anyway, there's that. Let's get that out of the way. Now, this is the fun part, cutting all of these rings off. These are known as hog rings, and it's just a ring. I know we talked about this in the other videos, but in case you're new, that is basically what holds your material to the seat frame underneath. See, there's your actual seat frame there. And there's about a hundred of these things that'll hold these covers on. They use a lot of them. That's what made it last so many years. You gotta go through and you gotta cut all of these off. And there will be a lot of them. I 
I just found a new trick. Now that I'm done, do I like to give it a little twist? Maybe. There we go, yeah, yeah. Noticing, if you give them a little twist sometimes they'll just come right on out of there. You don't have to actually cut them, which is nice because these things will wear out a pair of your wire cutters in a hurry. In fact, I think I've already lost a pair because I had to switch to another pair of pliers because my other ones wasn't cutting no more. These are just about to get as bad. These things are no joke. So now that I got all those rings out of there, I'm just gonna come through here and trim down one of the sides, I think. It should start all oh, come off here. There we go. Yeah, now we could kind of unwrap it. Yeah, like that. We'll trim this side the same way. It's on here so tight that you, you have to cut it or it's just not even gonna slip off of any of this stuff that it goes around. But after that, it'll come right off of there. Just like that. There we go. We can. Yeah, there we go. We can get that right off of there. Now all we're left with is this little crappy foam. We'll get it off next. Let's see about getting the foam off. The foam has hog rings holding it too, but it's so deteriorated you can practically just pull it loose. I don't think we'll have to get in there and actually cut the hog rings to get this part off. Nah, see how it just comes right loose. Be nice getting all this off of here. This stuff is so nasty I could only imagine how bad it would smell if we left it in there. You know, and then let the car heat up. There's some more of those wires. That, I guess just goes through the foam. Look, that's actually embedded in the foam. So I guess that's just part of the the foam, it actually had some wire in it. You guys leave me a comment if you know about that. I've never seen that before. Yeah, you see how easy that just comes right off of there. And like I said, we've got all new foam. This stuff is so deteriorated, I don't think it would provide us much comfort anyway. I mean, it had springs poking through all over the place. Just give me a little wire brush. I'm gonna get in here and clean up some of this. This is pretty funky inside of here. I think we need to get all that out of there, you know, as best we can, get all that out of there and then go back with uh, some sort of a rust defender type paint, something that'll kind of help convert the rust, maybe some rust converter, something, something needs to go in there because it does have surface rust and I don't want it to progress any further. So the way that stuff works, the, uh, the rust killers and rust inhibitors and all that kind of stuff is they want you to go through and kind of get the crust off, you know. Anything that's kind of flaking, coming loose, they want you to get all that off first. They don't actually want you to come in and clean, like don't come in here and sand all of this off or grind it off of the grinder or anything. Just get the loose stuff off. And then when you come back with that stuff over the top, you just spray it on, brush it on, whatever kind you buy, it will convert that rust, the remaining surface rust. But yeah, you do want to get all the flaky stuff off first. Uh, that is mostly garbage. Don't be alarmed. This is actually solid and in good shape. It does have a decent amount of surface rust on it, but the stuff I'm brushing off of here, that's not actually rust. That's just old foam material that's falling down in there and probably <laughs> there's no telling how much pop coffee you name it that has been dumped and poured onto it over the years so now it's just crusty off down in here is all it is and we'll get all that cleaned up like i said and then we will hit it with some rust converter you want to get all that old upholstery material off you see where some of it's still hanging on there want to clean Clean all of that off too.
Okay, so now that we got everything all cleaned up, I'm just gonna go through and just kind of hit it with some of the old rust converter here. This is rust inhibitor is what this is. There's lots of different brands out there. Just pick you out whatever you think is gonna work better. They've got all kinds of different brands out there. They all work pretty much the same. You just want to kind of clean up the surface a little bit. Notice I used a wire wheel. I didn't use a, a sander or a grinding disc or any of that. We just wanted to work some of that loose scaly stuff off. And we did that. The wire wheel works very well for that. You could use a wire brush at some of the harder to reach areas. But just get that loose stuff off. That's all we want. Well, there's one side down, one more to go. Well, okay, so I've got everything all sprayed. We're good to go there. I've kind of ran into a situation here. So my original plan was to run some one inch thick foam over the old material, which I think would be more than thick enough, but the back of the seats turned out so nice after we stripped off all that old crappy foam and replaced it with new stuff that I just can't bring myself to use any of that old material. So that's why we went ahead and stripped it off. But yeah, the back of the seats turned out so nice having all this brand new foam, getting rid of all that junk, that stinking, nasty, deteriorated foam was definitely the best way to go. And I'm just going to continue on with that plan and replace all the bottom foam as well. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is the way we do it around here. We're just flying by the seat of our pants, kind of figuring this out as we go. I've never done this before. This is the first time, but so far so good. Everything's working out really, really nice. But this obviously isn't gonna be thick enough to go right over those springs. And yes, I do have some burlap. Some of you guys were suggesting that I put the burlap down first and then put the foam over that, but this is just not gonna be thick enough. Yeah, I don't even think the burlap will help us out in this situation. So anyway, not a big deal. We're just going to run to the store. We're going to get the good thick stuff and then we will continue on after that. That's just kind of how these projects go. You just kind of figure it out as you go when you've never done it before. So we are back. Went to the Walmart, got the two inch stuff. The other stuff was only one inch thick, so twice as thick. I think this is going to work so much better. Let's get this rolled out on here. I think we'll, we'll notch that so that this will scoot all the way back, even with that bar. That way when our, our material you know, wraps over the edge, the material that we're gonna put on top of here, it can be all kind of consistent. It won't have like a drop off here, then go over there, right? It'll all just go right over the edge. I think this would be a good time to test out my new Milwaukee pins. These things are high dollar. And I got sent some by a subscriber, a whole pack of these things. So it looks like uh, that's about how far we need to notch it. So pretty easy, not rocket science or anything. And then we'll take our razor blades, which coincidentally was sent to us by a subscriber as well. Look how good those work, man. These things are awesome. You guys have been making my job a lot easier. Sending me all this cool stuff. So there we go, we'll slide that right up in there like that. Let me shut this before I cut my finger off. This is just gonna come right, I think we went far enough. Yeah, how about that, look at that. So I think we're positioned pretty well. We'll take the same marker and we'll come around and just kind of mark all the way around this thing and trim off. I've got it lined up pretty good with the edge, but you know, you have to trim off the corners for sure. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, got my foam kind of roughed in. It's not trimmed perfectly yet, but I've got the length straightened out there. I'm gonna go ahead, run me just a little bit of this glue. And I'm gonna put my burlap on. 
I think this is going to help with the springs a little bit. Keep it from eating into my phone, you know? So, anyway, we're going to spray the springs, then we'll spray some burlap, and then I'll roll it out on here. Let my glue get sticky. It ought to be good enough to uh, put on there now. There we go, something like that. I kind of let it hang over my edges just a little bit. Now, in theory, this should help with my my foam, I think. Keep the springs from kind of eating into the bottom of it, right? I don't know, I'm not an upholstery guy. I think I've said that a million times. Uh, I did notice that the original foam did have burlap under it. If you don't blame me, I'll show you. Yeah, you see that? That's the, the original burlap that was under the original foam. So I'm just doing what was already there. Just cut us some notches here so that we can run this kind of back and over the edge, you know? Just like we're gonna do on the foam. We notched out the foam, so we're gonna notch this out too. You see what I'm talking about? That way it'll go back in, and there'll be enough for it to kind of wrap over. Cut the excess off here, there we go. Just like before, we're gonna spray both sides. We want the burlap and the springs to have the glue on it. And I think I've said this a million times, you want your glue to tack up and get kind of sticky before you stick both sides together. As long as you do that, you'll be okay on the glue. Glue's feeling pretty sticky. It doesn't take long, it only takes like a, a minute, if that. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this back over here. Like that. Like that. I'm gonna have to spray a little more glue on this this overlapping part because we didn't get any on this layer, remember? That's why it's not sticking. We got glue on this and look, it doesn't stick. It's not sticking because we haven't sprayed the other layer on, on this part, you see what I'm saying? So, we'll do that now. We've got glue on this layer already. All we need is a little more over here. And then when it tacks up, we'll touch both sides together and they will be married forever. Okay, now that ought to be pretty dang good to protect the bottom side of our foam, I think. And it, you know, it just makes it a little stronger, you know, if you think about it. That foam, it had all kinds of stuff. It had wires running through it and all kinds of, you know, just to make it more rigid and stronger and last over the years. And I mean, it, it made it 50 years, so I don't know. If we could get a few years out of this, I'll be happy. With the burlap on, let's go ahead and get our foam back into position since we've got it cut. Shouldn't be too hard to line it right back up again. Let's put it right back into our little slots there. All right, all right. Now with just a little bit of shaping, you know, just like we did before, we'll have to kind of round the edges over like we did on the backs when we did the bucket part. Pretty easy. Uh, I will add just a little bit of glue once I get it exactly where I want it to kind of help hold it where it doesn't move anymore. And after that, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, now that I've got it positioned right where I want it, I'm just gonna kind of flip it up. Just spray a little bit of glue. Just to hold it in place. I don't want it moving around on me while I'm trying to trim it. I'm sure it's dry just for a minute. We can go ahead and stick it back down. And there we go. That should not move anymore. That ought to be pretty good. We'll do this the other side the same way. And that takes care of that side. Let's trim up some of the bulk on the corners here. Don't need none of that no more. So I got my little angle grinder, got a little roll lock disc on it. I'm gonna do just like I did those buckets. And we're just gonna go through and kind of contour all the edges, round them off. Obviously you're not gonna want them 
square it off like this. So all we're gonna do is just kind of smooth them up really easy. You gotta wear a mask when you do this. This stuff is bad. I mean, even with a mask on, this stuff just tears me up. So you're gonna get covered with this crap. Get the crap in my eye. Even with glasses on, didn't help. So we've gone through it. All I did was round the edges off. It's that's just so it doesn't have that blockish look to it. That's all I did. Really easy to do. Anybody can do it. Uh, man, this stuff is nice and soft. Look, look at that. You stick your whole damn arm in there. All right, that's awesome. So where, what do we do now? Well, all right, this is what we came up with. Uh, I got some really, look how thin that is. That is pretty dang thin. Uh, and all it is is just kind of a, I don't know, kind of a cotton little fabric there. And it comes in like a big 45 inch wide piece you know 60 inches long and i'm trimming it into 15 inch sections and just wrapping it around over the edge here and it should be thin enough that it won't come through when we put when we wrap our fabric on here but it provides a backing for when we run our fabric over you know the actual seat cover over the edges of this so i did that all the way around she's all glued in uh, i'm just going to show you kind of how we did it Making my last cut right now. This is my last two pieces. This should get us all the way around this thing. So yeah, like I said, I just measured off 15 inch sections, you know, 45 inches wide that gave us three pieces. Turned out to be perfect. And it was cheap. I think this whole thing was only, I think $10 at Walmart. Now that I got my piece cut, I'm just gonna run the glue through here. We're gonna do like we always do and just do one little section at a time. I wouldn't want to run my glue all the way around this thing. I just wanna do one piece at a time. And as always, you wanna do both pieces, man. I can't stress that enough. It's gotta have glue on both of the pieces. The piece that you're gluing on and the piece that you're gluing it on too. So now that my glue's tacked up, Let's get it stuck on here. Let's stick it to it, in other words. I want to even kind of line this up best I can. You're not going to see any of this once the uh, seat cover's on, so I'm not too worried about it, but I still want it to look okay. I want everything to be kind of even, you know what I mean? So, kind of matched up the piece we already put on, you see there? Kind of lined it up there. I'm going to come around to the corner, but I don't want to get too crazy over there just yet. I want to kind of roll this over my edge, try to chase out any kind of wrinkles the best we can. Just like that. Let's take this, put it up there kind of out of the way. I'm going to run this underneath here the best we can. Just like we did on the other side, this actually worked out pretty well over there. So I'm just going to do the same thing over here. Just barely overlapped it there just to make sure we had enough. We'll lift this up and just roll it right under the edge there. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. That's actually not too bad. Finish rolling this up just right under the edge. It'll go right up in there where the uh, hog ring holes are. That's the rings that's going to hold all of this together. You know, we're gluing everything, which is great, but it, it'll have those rings holding it to the seat frame as well so i mean this stuff will not go anywhere when we're done i promise you that now that we got that section done let's move on to the next section we'll just go right around the corner here and just get this side kind of got a trend going here we're not going around the corners we're, we're doing kind of a 
just a side at a time. We did the front side. We're going to do this side. Then we'll still, you know, go around the corner. We don't want to actually spray all of this and then try sitting fighting with each piece. It's just, I don't know. If you're good like that, more power to you. But for me, like I've said a million times, I'm not an upholstery guy. So I'm just kind of winging it here. So I like to go slow. running around there a little bit as I go. Try to chase the wrinkles out. Like I like do the other side. This side could be pretty challenging because it's got these things sticking out, you know, for the seat to mount to and all of that. So kind of got to be mindful of all of that as you go. And be really crucial in these corners because they're the ones that will really get you. And I'm just kind of stretching it just a little bit as I go and just kind of rolling it over. And this is the part where it could get away from you and you can make a mess. Ask me how I know. So I'm just going to do a little at a time. Just trying to relax the material a little bit. And there we go. That ought to work just like that. We'll trim that in just a minute. The important part is, is we still got our nice shape, our contour, right? Now we'll come through here and just kind of work all of this till we kind of chase out some of the wrinkles. There we go. That's not so bad. That looks pretty good. All right, let me grab my scissors. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I got these little bunny ears sticking up here. All we got to do is come through here and trim it. Just like, just hold your scissors kind of down to the surface, you know, hold them kind of flat there. And look, you'll end up with a nice little seam. I mean, that is, that's really good. I don't think we'll see that once we have our material on there at all. I don't think it'll be a problem. And there we go again, just like so. Look, man, that's not so bad. I, I think we could live with that. Uh, this is what I was talking about over on the side. We got obstacles over here. Uh, obviously, we got the, the seat adjustment handle there. Makes it where you can slide the seat forward and backwards got that sticking out in the way I could work around that no problem but right here and back here we got those little things sticking out this is the part that the seat actually mounts to and then this is the part that it hooks that allows it to uh, go forward and backwards you know lean forward and backwards I'm just going to cut me a little X in there We'll push this on here. I don't want to get too crazy because I don't want to uh, stretch all the material. So, see if we could just kind of. That's how I did the other side. It worked out all right. <laughs> Once I finally get the hole, we could just push this on in here and go around it there, like that. Like that. That's what we're trying for. So, now one down, we got this other one to go. I'll go ahead and get that. But you can see how we could finally wrap the material around. And that's how we do the sides, just like that. That's not so bad, I think that'll work. Our seat cover will go over it, and this just, just, just serves as a backing. That's all that's for that way. Because that seat material, if it's just a little bit thin or whatever, it's not going to be good enough on its own, I don't think, without having some sort of a backing. Seems like it anyway. I thought this would be a good idea. Just kind of go the extra mile with it. Give it a little something, a little more rigidity, if you will. All right. I think that's going to work. Over on the front corner, we're going to have a little bit of excess material. That's to be expected, just like we did up there. This time, we won't really have the option to cut it. I think if we cut it, that would be a bad idea. So. We're just gonna fold it over like that. It's got the glue, so it's kind of created a pleat, you know, if you will. And like I said, once that cover goes over it, you ain't gonna see none of that. We'll go on around the back here. Notice that I'm gluing the bar itself. That's the way it was from the factory. They actually had all this material wrapped completely around and attached to that bar 
with glue and with uh, those hog rings. So I'm just doing what they did. I think it'll work. Let's bring this on around now that our glue is all tacked up. And you'll notice I always, when I'm sticking this, I always kind of work into my corners here so that way I could get it a nice tight seam right there for us to trim off. It seems to be working out okay. And then I'll come under here last and just kind of tighten it up just a little bit. Take out all my uh, slack and stuff. And we'll just run this right up under here. And that should be good enough, y'all. That should be just fine. By the time we put our material over that, it should look like a million bucks. I got another piece that I'm gonna run across the back. And then we'll trim off our little shark fin we got going on here. And there you have it. I mean, that's pretty decent. I don't, I don't know why that wouldn't work. It seems like that would work just fine. Like I said, we'll do our last little piece across the back here, which it really kind of doesn't even need, but I'm going to put it on there anyway. We've got it. It's bought. It's paid for. Why not? So this is where we're at so far. I went ahead and put in the back piece, wrapped it around over the edge. You see that there? I think that's going to work just fine. Uh, you can see the, oh, the corners nice and smooth. Nice little transition there. I don't think it's going to give us any issues. Uh, I do want to go one step further with it. And uh, we got this over here. It's a whole nother pack of it. I bought two packs of this stuff. And uh, it's more than wide enough to actually, remember it's 45 inches wide. We could throw that thing on here and trim it up and make one, just one more nice even layer right over the whole top of this thing. What do you think about that? And then trim it up real nice out here all the way around just make a nice straight seam all the way around this thing and then that, that'll kind of give us one even layer that covers up everything i think that'll work pretty good let's just give it a shot yeah i can't see us going wrong with this this seems like a good idea to me i don't know you guys tell me but it seems like by the time we put this whole outer layer on here all the way across you know that that just seems like the way to go i can't imagine it being a bad idea and we got we turned it the right way we've got plenty of material to make this happen you see there how that just covers the whole thing all the way across if we just went through took our time and trimmed it up all nice and neat around the edges i think that will be a nice finishing touch and then we can wrap it with our actual upholstery material. So yeah, like this, maybe we'll go ahead and just run it just right over the edge like that. Perfect. And when we come in and we trim around our corner here, we won't have that much to go over the edge. You see what I'm saying? So there won't be as much material to bunch up. And we'll just have this roll over, just right over it, all the way around, front and back, all the way across the front, everything. You see here, it's, it, it just turned out perfect length. I haven't trimmed this at all yet. You see, it's just the right length to just roll right over the edge there. So that's, I just can't help but think that's the way to go. So I'm going to do it. Got everything spread out the way we want it. I'm just going to flip up a little section here. And we'll start with a section at a time, just like we always do. Feels pretty tacky to me. Let's try this out. Keep it nice and straight. Sure, we don't have any wrinkles. It's looking pretty decent. What do y'all think? Not so bad. Just another add a little layer, you know, just to help kind of hide things. That way it doesn't come through when we put the actual material on there, our actual seat cover, you know. We'll just fold that right over just like that. This is the fun part when you're doing the wrinkled, the wrinkled up corners, you know, you always end up with a little, a little too much going on. We'll just kind of mess with it. Right. And then we'll trim. I don't want all of that on there. So I could just take my scissors and just kind of come around here like this. on a nice, even, straight cut. Because this is it. 
once we do this, there's nothing else going to hide it except for the seat cover itself. So this is our last layer here. I don't want it all messed up, and I think that's going to work. I think that's just fine. Yeah, that turned out pretty good. Let's go ahead and flip this up and do our next section. Go ahead and mark out the next hole. This is for that big armrest that goes on there. I'm just gonna take this, kind of pinch it up there. Cut it right on the mark, that ought to be good enough. And then bring it down on there. This is a dry fit, we haven't stuck our glue on yet. So I wanna make sure everything's in the right spot. That seems to be okay. Now we can flip it up and put our glue on. Try something a little different on this side. I thought maybe we would mark it and then trim off the corner first. I wonder if that would help us out any. About to find out. I thought maybe having a little less material out here would kind of help us keep it from all bunching up, you know? The other side turned out fine, but I just thought maybe this would help us a little, make it a little easier is what I'm trying to say. Sure we don't get any wrinkles. All right, let's see if that helped us any. Keep it from kind of bunching up a little bit. A little bit's okay. We just don't want a lot. And I think that's gonna be okay right there. That's acceptable. I think our cover's gonna cover all of that up just fine. And there we go. That just kind of gave us all just one even layer to work off of. I think that's going to look really good. And you won't tell what's going on underneath it now. I think it won't show through, you know what I mean? Before, I think the seams are going to show through, and I don't think it will now. Got a lot of overhang on the back side that we don't need, so I'll just go through and just trim it off. Gives us a nice straight line through here. Should be all we need, and then it'll kind of just wrap underneath like the the layer underneath it. See, something like that. That ought to work. the little bracket that the bucket the seat back to the bucket seat goes into I'll trim that out we'll need that later so now that we got ourselves a nice soft surface to work off of man this thing's gonna be really nice when we're done y'all comfortable very comfortable that's what we want to big old car deserves a nice comfortable seat uh, here is our material I got to figure out which way is is the right way out here I think it seems like both sides are a little different. I think I've got it. it. Needs to go this way. This is the material that we are going to use on this part of the seat. And I bought a bunch of it. So I could go over it two times if I need to. But this is what we're gonna do right here. I'm trying to keep it out of the floor. We're gonna wrap this around here really nice and tight. 
and then we'll hog ring it from the back side and man she ought to be good to go I think that's gonna look pretty decent what do you think but yeah I think if I just went through here like this got rid of the rest of this it'd make it a little easier to work with so I'm gonna take my hog ring pliers under here and uh, I don't know if I showed y'all this on this video but check this out this is what we're gonna be doing you see how that happened just makes a nice little ring and that's what's going to hold this to the seat frame. Pretty nice little deal. Works pretty good. I'm going to take my material. I'm just kind of double it up on the end here. Make it a little thicker. I got a, a ring right up in here. A hole actually. And then we're going to put this right inside of it. Once I get a few of these started, we'll flip it over and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I think now that we got one started, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of flip this up so we can work underneath it. You see here, this is what we're talking about. You see the, these rings are actually holding the material to the seat frame itself because the seat, this is the seat frame right here, the metal part. It's got holes in it for these hog rings to go into. So, this is what's gonna hold everything nice and solid. So I'm gonna double up my material under here. There is a hole right here, right where my thumb is. I can take my pliers, put it right there in that spot, squeeze that, and there you have it. There's your hog ring. Pretty easy to do. We're gonna do that all the way across here, and then we can start to stretch our material on the other side and get it nice and tight. Just moving right on down the line. There's another one there. Let's see, they're about, I'd say probably about every six inches, there's gonna be a uh, hog ring hole. And you could get in there and double them up if you want. I'll probably go through here and actually add some to it in each hole, that way it's got more than just one thing sitting there holding it, you know, to have a couple of them, or maybe even three of them. I noticed they did that on the factory ones, you, you know, you have like two or three of them in each hole, especially when you came to a spot where he's going around the corner or something, they kind of got a little excessive with their uh, hog rings. That's okay. I believe this is gonna be the last one. And then I gotta refill it. Yep, we're out. Got a whole box of these things. They come about a thousand to a box, I do believe. And uh, you'll get these sleeves like this. Pull this out, pop that in there. And there you go, we're loaded, ready to go. Uh, this is unsponsored, nobody gave me these, I bought these with my own money, but they are working out really well for this, so I don't mind letting you guys know, man. Dewalt makes a really nice hog ring plier set. I got mine at Tractor Supply, uh, you could probably get one at Lowe's or something like that, maybe, I don't know, you just have to check. Get them online, uh, this whole set was about 35, 40 bucks. Yeah, you see what I mean? I tripled it up right there just for a good measure. Figured it's in the middle, why not? Uh, I feel like doubling up your material is definitely the way to go. Make it nice and strong. You wouldn't want this stuff to just rip right through, right? I think between doubling it up and having the backing, the uh, hog rings is going through the material and the backing all at the same time. So maybe that'll help hold it as well. Uh, that's it, man. Uh, let's see, I think we might have one more down at this end. Yeah, you see the hole there? That's what we're doing all the way across. Same thing. Just run it, just gonna double that up. There it is, we got it. Let's put another one in there. Why not? Hell, let's put one more in there. Why not? There we go. So now having the front edge done, I think we could start stretching it tight, you know? Because now we got something to pull against, right? We'll wrap it around under here and get one started. There's that one. Yo, we have to cut our little slots here for the material to go all the way down and then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here like this, 
Stretch this side just a little bit. I'm only going to put one ring in for now till we get everything just right. Just like I did on the other side. And cool thing about the rings, I mean, we're not gluing now. We're, we're just holding this on with these rings. We can move them if we need to. If we get to a position like we got a wrinkle or something we can't chase out, cut the hog ring off, chase the wrinkle out, and then re-hog ring it. Uh, let's see. Got my scissors here. I don't know, man. Maybe I should go razor knife here. What do you think? Because all I need is just a nice little cut just right on top of that all right I don't have to get too super carried away let's see there I should have picked a new blade I think this will get it though I don't want to get too carried away I don't want a big giant hole in it maybe something like that Try this side, we'll do the same thing. It's a quick way to dull a razor blade, a razor blade, isn't it? Cutting against that metal like that. Well, that's okay. Thanks to you guys, I got sent an entire box of these things. So we are going outrageous on the uh on the old razor knives, man. We're doing good in that department. So that's not too bad, man. I think I could go ahead and just wrap my material underneath it, continue to kind of stretch on it a little bit, and uh, we'll trim off what we don't need. As you can see, we got plenty of material. So we'll trim off what we don't need, run those underneath there, and hit it up with some more of these old hog rings. You'll use a bunch of these, I promise you, a whole bunch of them. We'll flip this up and stretch some of this material over on the back side and start running our rings under here. Let's try this. I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll try it out and see. Kind of hard to know if you got wrinkles or not if you don't have it sitting up on its side. So I'll probably have to keep it up on its side like that. That way we keep the keep everything pulled out of it. See how we got a wrinkle here? Yeah, we need to be able to make those necessary adjustments as we go. Oh, on you know what, on the back side, they actually hog ringed it to the springs. That's how they did the back side from the factory. So you see there, that's actually, this right here is actually one of the springs, one of the seat springs. You see, I've got all my material hog ringed to it. That's what they did in the factory. That's what we're doing now. I think it's gonna work just fine. Let's. We're gonna wrap that all the way around that and just hit it up. And cool thing about this is you can put a ton of these things on here because there's lots of springs underneath here all the way across. So this will not be an issue finding a spot to attach this stuff to, I promise you that. I wanna thank my camera lady. Mrs. Beard, she's been doing a really good job running the camera and she's gonna keep an eye out here for me and let me know if I've got any wrinkles that need to be pulled out since I don't have eyes over there right now. And while she keeps an eye on that, I'm gonna run some more of these rings back here. And teamwork makes the dream work, right? Now I've already run my rings through here. Now this is what I was talking about a minute ago. If you get to a point where you can't chase the wrinkle out, you see how we got this wrinkle here? Not a big deal, it probably won't even show, but just to be on the safe side. I mean, all you gotta do is just go ahead and, and remove that ring and just scoot your material wherever you need it and re-ring it. Not a big deal, not a big deal at all. So there you go, we'll get that off of there. Wrap this around the spring. Now that we've chased the wrinkle out, Hit it up again with another ring, or two, or three, why not? <laughs> this is hog ring city over here, I'll tell you what. The front's looking great, man. No wrinkles or nothing, dude. This material is really, really stretchy, so find yourself a good stretchy material and this will go a lot easier. Went ahead and laid it down, trim off some of this material we got way too much of it here
Go ahead and cut that back out just like we did before with the foam. That way we can put our seat backs on here in a minute. Getting some more of the excess trimmed off here. And I think we're about done with this bottom piece. Check it out, man. I mean, look at it. Let's have a little look. We got the burlap on the bottom side, man. Kind of looks professional, really, when you look at it from that aspect. Uh, that's the way they did it from the factory. Uh, let's flip it over. See if we ended up with any wrinkles or anything. I don't, I don't see why we would have. And no, uh, we didn't. No wrinkles at all, man. That is awesome. I think that is going to work. And uh, the best part is, is, golly, man, that thing does really feel comfortable. I think now would be a good time to go ahead and put these back on there. It's starting to come together, y'all. I'm getting a good feeling, getting a good feeling. Now let's show you what we're gonna do on those. Got these from Walmart, and uh, they seem to be pretty decent as far as just where the back part of the seat goes, because they got stitching and everything. They're kind of fancy, you know? And uh, I think they're gonna fit on there all right. The this, this shape seems to be good. So let's just try it out. Let's see what happens. So this is actually made for a bucket seat, so it's got a top and a bottom. Obviously, we don't need the bottom. This is known as a split bench. I couldn't find any split bench seat covers that were worth a damn so i just that's why i came up with the idea that we will just find something that looks good for the back side right and then we'll just have to make our own thing for the bottom side because nothing would fit right everything was just too damn small these big old seats that these old seats are huge so anyway let's try to slip this down on here see what we're working with uh, i'm not sure i bought some some black fabric paint just in case we could see through this because if you'll notice on the sides, they're always cheap on this. The sides are always kind of, you can see through them. And I'm just about willing to bet when we slip this on here, this white is actually going to bleed through. So we may have to go ahead and dye it black and then slip the seat cover on. But let's find out for sure. See how this is going to look, get an idea of what we're working with here. And remember, we don't need this bottom part. It's gonna go here in a minute. Let's get everything positioned just right. Not sure what's going on there. What's that about? It seems to be coming off. It's almost like an adhesive. I don't know. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Be kind of careful with these. I don't want to mess them up. Pulling and stretching on them. You see, I don't quite have it positioned right. There we go. We need to bring this. The seams on the side need to be lined up a little better. There, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for right there. That's not so bad. Uh, it's going to look a little wrinkly at first. A little heat will take care of that, no problem. But I'm happy so far with the way this is fitting. This isn't too bad. Our foam seems to be working out just right. Now, I don't know if the camera's picking this up or not. Come around over here and look at this, babe. Th this is what I mean. I hope y'all can see that, but that white is kind of bleeding through this more meshy material on the sides. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back off. Uh, let's hit it up with the spray dye. I got some right here. This is just vinyl fabric dye. We ought to be able to, to go ahead and spray that on our foam. And then when we slip that back down on it, we won't have this issue. But we got a really good idea of how well this is gonna fit. Uh, don't forget on the back side of the seat, it's got that big cover that actually snaps right on. So we don't care what's going on back here. We're not gonna see any of this. We're only worried about around the sides and stuff.
All right, I do think that's going to get it. We only got to do it around the edges. Don't have to worry about it in the middle. That'd just be a waste of material. We ain't got my screws in the hole. That way, when I slip that back down on there, I can just kind of feel for where those are at and poke them, poke them right on through with a razor blade or something. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the seat cover back on, and then we'll get over on this other side, get it straightened out. And when we come back, it ought to be looking pretty dang good, I would, I would think. I mean, I don't see any reason for it not to. That seat cover actually fit pretty good. If it wasn't for the white bleeding through, hell, we'd be done right now. So I've got it on there. It's a little crooked. We're going to have to move it around a little bit. No big deal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and trim the bottom of this off because we just don't need it. And it's kind of in my way at this point. So it's got a little tab underneath here. You guys see this part? If you're familiar with seat covers, they always give you that to kind of tuck it in there and help to keep it in. I'm going to keep that part of it, but the rest of it I just don't need. So we're just going to come across here and cut it off. I know you're probably like, whoa, ain't no going back now. I know. We kind of passed the point of return a while back anyway, so who cares? So we'll tuck all of this in. Before I do that, I got to get this thing kind of a little more. I don't know if you can look at it and see, but we're not quite, we're just not quite straight yet. We need to do a little, a little some of this, I think. So having that piece off will kind of help us out, I think. Now we can kind of go through and just slip this on and off as needed. Without having all that extra i think what i need is to bring yeah something like that maybe Let's see if that did us any good be careful when you're doing this have, have some patience because if you tug around on this thing too much you'll rip it you definitely don't want to be down there having to try to buy another one of these this came from walmart i think i might have mentioned that uh, this is their classic series. Check it out. Dickies makes these. And if you want some, just go look for their class classic collection. They got tons of different kind of stitching. They had some really cool stitching with uh, like black and red stitching and piping and just all kinds of different stuff. None of that really would have worked for our deal, but uh, maybe it'd work for yours. Pretty cool stuff, I think. Uh, they had some that had, uh, I don't see it on here, but it had like the little v thing for the you know chevys and all that kind of stuff so anyway kind of cool you know a little better than what we're used to when we're talking about old cheap seat covers well, at least they're trying that i think is much straighter and like i said a little bit of heat will help with, relax the wrinkles that's just a common issue with any kind of upholstery work the best part is is it fits look at that y'all it actually fits that's the best part of the whole thing Put our seat button back on. That way, if we push this button, we can move the seat up, you know what I mean? And then that's gonna make it where I can tuck all this stuff down in there. Yeah, like that, see? Now we can pull that through there, kind of tighten everything up on the bottom. Now that I got everything positioned the way I want it, I went ahead and pulled the seat completely off because it turns out we've got way more material than we need hanging off the bottom of this so i'm just going to come along through the seam get rid of all of that i'll probably take my hog ring pliers and go ahead and take this run it up in there and you see where i got all these other hog rings probably just do the same thing with that just run it in there and hog ring the crap out of it So this is what I was talking about. We got us a cover that goes on the back side of this. And you know what? I'm not gonna do this right now, but I will do this in the very near future. I'm gonna recover these because I got some really good material that would look nice on this. It's kind of a grainy material, just like you see here. This is kind of has a little bit of a grain to it. And I have some stuff that will look really nice on there, I think. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do, man. I'm gonna recover these. I'm not gonna do it on this video. We'll save that for another time. But this is what I was talking about. In case you didn't remember, in case you missed it, there's no need to worry about what we're doing on the back side of this. This is why we didn't mess with it. We didn't cover it with foam or anything. It's because we've got this guy. 
It goes on really easy. You got these little hooks that slide up on this bar right here, slide it into position. It's got a couple of more little clips here that are gonna clip to these little bars inside of here. Super easy. We'll get that clipped right into position. And then on the bottom, it'll have a couple of screws that hold it on. It's getting started over on the other side. Already sprayed the die. I already cut the bottom of it off, because why not? No sense in having it in the way. I'll go ahead and get this slipped on here. Well, we're gonna repeat the whole process, what we did over on the other side. And hopefully this side will turn out as good as that side did, because I think it turned out pretty dang good. Do the same thing we did over on the other side. We'll just wrap this around here. Nice and tight, hit it up with the old hog green pliers. And we'll put it back on. So now that we've got this tied on here really well, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Let's put this cover back on. See, I wanted to show y'all over here. I've got a whole roll of this stuff. It's like, I don't know, five feet wide, I think. And it's got a nice little texture to it, a little grain, as they call it. And I think that'll look really good on the backs of those seats. Yeah, I think that'll look really good on here. Uh, and it'll match our side panels that we put on the inside. We made those homemade, if you missed that on a previous video, uh, we already used that material inside the car so it'll kind of help tie everything together and I think it'll look really good on there. All right, there we have it. Not too shabby. So obviously we're missing something, our armrest that goes in the middle. Uh, as you can see, she's got a little bit of an issue. We're splitting at the seams here. We've got some wear here, which is pretty typical of an armrest, right? Uh, you know what? I don't really have any means to cover this unless I could just find something that'll slip on it. I'm thinking about taking this down and actually having this done professionally. I don't know if it would cost a whole lot of money. I mean, it's, it's pretty small. But uh, otherwise, you know, we're gonna have to figure something else out. I've got other material, maybe we could figure, maybe I could stitch this back together where it's busted through the seam here. Uh, if we heated that with a heat gun and got it, you know, a little more stretchy, got some of it stretched back, you know, uh, we might could stitch, I mean, I, I know I could, I could stitch that together myself, that's not an issue. We'd have to do that one too. But then we'd gotta come up with something up here, and I don't know, man. <laughs> I wonder if we could get away with just flipping it upside down. There we go. Yeah, now you're talking. So yeah, a little bit of work with a heat gun, we'd be able to get all this to go back together. A little bit of stitching. I don't see why we couldn't flip it upside down, seriously. The only way they would see it is if you flipped it up. And I, you know what? That's not how I roll, man. If I got a seat a uh, seat armrest available, I'm gonna use it. So chances are it's gonna stay down anyway. So we may just roll like that for now. Uh, maybe we can hit this up with the old fabric die, change it to black so it'll tie in with the rest of it. So I don't know, we'll have to figure that out on another video, man. But you guys, seriously, what do you think so far? Now I know she's got a little bit of wrinkles, but like I said, a lot of that will come out with a little bit of heat. Let this thing sit outside in the summer and all that will relax out of there. Or maybe we'll take a heat gun to it. I don't really know. We'll see. But that's where we're at so far. We don't have a lot of money into this seat, y'all. So anyway, cost-wise, we don't have a lot into this. Uh, a lot less than trying to have upholstery work done, I promise you that. I think I probably mentioned this before. Uh, upholstery is not in the budget right now, but in the future, I would like to have the seats done up by a professional upholsterer and have all of this put back to factory-like conditions. But hey, at least when that time comes, they, they won't have to replace the foam, man. That's solid, that's nice. So in the next video, we're gonna get the seat put back in because man, I'm sick of trying to pull this thing in and out of the shop sitting down on that little boat seat I've got in there. It's ridiculous, very uncomfortable. I can't wait to get that in there. I would do it on this video. We're running a little behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this video out and then we'll do that on the next one because we gotta jack the car up and poke the holes up through the bottom of that new carpet and all that kind of stuff. It's a little time consuming. I'm not gonna do it right now. So please hit the subscribe button if you do like the content. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. Tell me, uh, tell me you're new, man. I love welcoming new subs. But hey, for now, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I will see you guys later.